Welcome to the ACX e-learning video on MAC filtering, a basic line of defense for your local area network that actually will enhance your network's performance while providing basic protection for the machines that are part of it. It does this by limiting communication in, out, and around your network to only those machines that are part of the authorized MAC address group. Whenever adjusting your network settings, avoid frustration, mishaps, and pitfalls by always making sure you perform these tasks from a hardwired connection. Now let's get to it and log on to the router. As you can see, we have already adjusted the LAN settings to a Class A or 10 network, as well as the DHCP server, so we'll go right to the MAC filtering. At ACX, we prefer the Class A network because it's the easiest URL to type and remember. Even though we bypassed the password for this demo, we highly recommend that all of your installations are password protected. Not all routers are identical, but the terminology is similar enough that it should be relatively easy to locate the MAC filtering manager on your device. Once we locate the MAC filtering manager, we select the only allow setting. This will filter or deny any machine that attempts to connect to your network that is not part of the filter list. The acronym MAC is short for Media Access Control Address, a hardware address that uniquely identifies each node of a network. In IEEE 802 networks, the data link control layer of the OSI reference model is divided into two sublayers, the logical link control layer and the media access control or MAC layer. The MAC layer interfaces directly with the network medium or hardware. Consequently, each different type of network medium requires a different MAC layer. What this definition is referring to is the actual MAC ID or address of any IP device expected to communicate over a TCP IP network. Here I've opened up a DOS prompt on a Windows XP machine so I can locate the MAC address for the computer I'm using to administer the router. Always add this MAC first. The WinXP command in DOS is ipconfig space forward slash all. This will display any NIC or network card's config details. It should be noted, however, that only the interfaces that are currently active will be seen. As you can see here, the format for a MAC address is a 6 byte or 6 octet hardware address consisting of 12 hexadecimal numbers, which also consist of 4 units of 4 bits separated by semicolon, period, or hyphen. It should be noted that a wired and a wireless NIC on the same computer are in fact two separate nodes, and each one's MAC must be added individually to the MAC table as if it were a completely separate machine. Let's go ahead and add this computer's wired NIC MAC address to the table. Since I connected to the router via DHCP, it has already captured my MAC address, so I'll use this handy router feature as a shortcut to typing in longhand. Most modern routers and network appliances have this built-in feature available. The ACX servers are equipped with a network probe utility, which will gather all information for each node on your network at the touch of a button. It then will automatically generate a PDF file for reference and record keeping. This is what a typical probe PDF looks like. We can use this information to enter the pertinent data into the MAC table. Simply copy and paste each node's MAC address into the correct box and then give the node or computer a unique name. Repeat the process for as many nodes you wish to add to the MAC filtering table. Remember, computers with multiple NICs must be added individually. Since this machine is equipped with multiple NICs, we'll add both to the MAC filtering table. To minimize confusion, place a reminder in the name area to which NIC this MAC address belongs to. This MAC address we know belongs to the wired or Ethernet port of the Toshiba. Now let's add the wireless node. Once again, we can refer to the Alexis G1 Network Pro PDF file to easily obtain the MAC address for the Toshiba's wireless NIC. We'll make sure that we label this one wireless.
Now that we have all the current network nodes added to our authorized MAC filter list, we can now reboot the router and activate the MAC filtering feature. One of the most common mistakes amongst engineers, installers, and even programmers is to assume. Since we don't want to assume, we'll simply log into the router again to ensure our settings are valid. Remember, you can always edit the MAC filtering table. Adding or removing nodes from the list at any time is quite simple. This whole procedure may seem a bit tedious at first, but it will actually enhance the performance of your router because your router will only listen to machines that it sees in the MAC filtering table and not waste resources on fulfilling requests from network nodes outside the scope of the MAC filtering list. This method is also considered pretty good protection or what IT pros call PGP security. It's an effective tool for keeping unwanted guests off your LAN and away from your online connection. For more e-learning videos, be sure to visit acxland.com.